What's up, PPPHD? Glad to have you back. I'm super excited to be giving my first conference talk in the next week or so, and I'm super excited also to share with you what this talk is actually about. So I'm on the Atlas experiment, and last week we talked about what missing transverse momentum was. And this week, we're going to move on to trigger. To understand what a trigger is and why we need it, first, we should understand our data-taking conditions. As you know, at the Large Hadron Collider, we collide protons into each other, and then we use big specialized detectors, like my experiment, Atlas, to take pictures of these collisions so that we can study them later. These collisions happen once every 25 nanoseconds. That's 40 million per second, meaning that in the time it takes for this 12 and a half second timer to run out, we will have collided protons 1 billion times. Now let's let that sink in for a minute. Now when I take pictures and video, usually I use this, the Panasonic G80, and at its high setting, it can take pictures at nine frames per second, nine pictures per second, and it sounds like this. And now putting the camera back onto the tripod in my room, I can take video at up to 60 frames per second. That's 60 pictures stitched together to make video. And the slow-mo guys on YouTube, they use slow motion cameras that can take pictures at up to several hundred thousand times per second. But our detector takes data 40 million times per second. That's 40 million pictures per second. How much space do you even need to store all of that? Now, each one of these pictures that we take is about one megabyte each in size, not that large. But if you take 40 million pictures a second, then that adds up to about 40 terabytes per second. Now I use this hard drive here, which is two terabytes in size, and it costs right now about 70 US dollars or so. With the data that we collect at my experiment, we could fill up 20 of these in just one second. And of course that's insane, because over the course of one year, that adds up to maybe about 400 million terabytes of data. By comparison, YouTube, this platform that you're watching on, it only gets about 1,000 terabytes of new video every year. So that means we generate more data than the biggest video platform on the internet. How do we even store it? And the answer is we don't store all of it. We're very selective about what we save. And that's where the trigger comes in. A trigger looks at the output of the detector directly and asks, is this event interesting? Is this event worth saving? If the event is worth saving, then the event is saved. If it's not interesting, then the event is not saved and it's just lost forever. There are lots of different triggers that look for different kinds of interesting events. And the trigger that I work on looks for events with a lot of missing transverse momentum. Meaning that if the trigger sees an event with a lot of missing transverse momentum, then that event is saved and then it's permanently in our hard disk and we can process it and analyze it as much as we like later down the road. But if the event doesn't have a lot of missing transverse momentum, or if the other triggers that look for other signatures don't find this event interesting, then that event is not saved at all and it's lost forever. By only saving what's interesting, we reduce our event rate from 40 million per second to maybe about one or 2,000 per second. And this translates to about 20,000 terabytes of data per year. Now, don't get me wrong, that's still a lot, but it's much better than 400 million terabytes that we had before. These interesting events that we save, we save them because either they have existing physics that we really want to study, or they potentially have signs of new physics that maybe we would like to look into. The trigger allows us to use our limited computing resources wisely by only focusing on what's interesting. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you learned a little bit about what I actually do. Leave a comment below if you did, or even if you didn't, leave a comment all the same. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna see more. Um, next week I will be in Greece, where I will be giving my talk and also rubbing shoulders with everyone else in the physics community. It's gonna be my first conference, I'm super excited. I'm not sure if I can put a vlog out, uh, but uh, keep your eyes peeled, it might just happen. So until next time, Bye.